All right, this video is a little special video, not related to an assignment or an exercise, but just to help you print for your midterm. And it's how to make your images, your images from your assignments and your exercises print ready. One thing you need to make something um, presentable for a critique in person is to mat your work. And we are going to do a pre-cut mat. A pre-cut mat is already at standard sizes. Standard art sizes are eight by 10, 9 by 12, 11 by 14, uh, 12 by 18, <laughs> there's 18 by 24, 16 by 20, um, 24 by 30, you know, on and on. And what's really nice about standard sizes for digital art, the mats are cheaper, the frames are cheaper, the portfolios are cheaper, the photo bags are cheaper. N not everything has to be custom. It will cost about $30 to, to cut a custom mat, just on average, for this class but a pre-cut mat can cost you $3. So because we're using an already sized mat that is basically um, eight by 10 in the middle and then 11 by 14 on the outside. So it, it's perfect for a letter sized piece of paper to overlap with it so that an eight and a half by 11 can, be, can frame an eight by 10 image really nicely. In order to be ready for that, we need to know that before we output our image files, right? So first thing I'll show you in Photoshop is just what the most standard mat is. And the best example for this is for your logo projects, assignment six, the ones we just finished. A standard mat opening is eight by 10 inches. And our lab resolution is 350 pixels per inch. So just like you did for your logos, I'm going to create a new file. I'm just going to call this Carl Print Ready. That is 8 by 10 inches by 350 pixels per inch. Okay, you have to choose when you set up a new file if you want it to be landscape format or portrait format. Landscape format means it is wider than it is tall. So if my logo is wider than it is tall, then I want it to be in this format. Makes sense. I also want to make sure my rulers are turned on. Command R turns them on and off in Photoshop. I want them on because the physical dimensions now really matter a lot. Right? Even though resolution is just the combination of the pixel dimensions and the physical dimensions, here the physical dimensions really matter because that's the size to which we're printing. We print in the physical world. Now I can go to my documents and open up my folder for the semester and choose the assignments I want to print. I'm requiring that each of you print one assignment from assignment six, either your black and white or your color logo. So how can I do that? Well, there are lots of ways. I can go to my PSD, either for my color version or for my black and white version. So if I open it up, here is my black and white PSD, and that PSD has a vector layer, a smart layer that's tied to a vector. You can tell that by the little icon in the layer window, and if I try to erase it on that layer, it won't let me because it's a smart vector content, and I definitely do not want to rasterize it. I want to leave it that way. That way, I can use this same file and print it at whatever physical size I want, at whatever resolution I want, because the vectors are scalable. But even so, I've added a drop shadow to it to help it show up on different backgrounds. And because that drop shadow, which is a reverse drop shadow in white, because that is tied to the vector, that will also scale up or scale down to whatever resolution, whatever physical size I want. So if I want to print this, All I have to do, it's already set up in an eight by 10 window like this. But I can also just take my EPS, my vector. This is just a review for how we did that. And I drag my EPS file into this eight by 10, 350 pixel per inch Photoshop file. And then I hold down shift and option. Holding down shift keeps it from distorting, but holding down shift and option keeps it from distorting and shrinks it towards the middle. So that's perfectly centered. And I, I like this because this shows me 
this is the part of the picture that's showing. This is the eight by 10 window. This black space around it, that's the mat. The paper I'm actually going to print it on is eight and a half by 11 inches, which means it will overlap with the, the mat a little bit, which allows me to tape it in and have it look really clean. So I just have to decide how would this look best within the mat. Now, does it matter if I have a drop shadow on it or not, if I'm printing it in black and white? Because this does not have any white drop shadow on it, right? That's to offset it for t-shirts or for black backgrounds. But if you wanted to, you could give it a drop shadow, but it wouldn't make sense to make it white. It would make sense to do something else with it, right? And play with, you know, maybe this slight gray. So we call this an offset. And it's up to you whether you want to have that in your printout or not. I think that looks pretty nice. So yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. So now how do I make it print ready? Well, first I check the image size. It needs to be eight by 10 by 350 or something higher than 350, right? So that's good, that checks out. Next, I have to save it in a flattened format, right? That saves memory. So I'm going to say layer, flatten image. So this is for printing. We're not having to make it transparent anymore. Then I'm going to save it in what's called an archive format. So not a PSD because that takes more memory than we need it to, and not a JPEG because we don't want to compress it, not a PNG because we don't want to compress it. We need a format that doesn't lose any data and yet conserves as much memory as possible. There is only one archive format we use for this class for two dimensions, and that is TIFF. So we say file, save as, to the desktop, Carl print ready, and I'll just call this black logo, not as a PSD, but as a TIFF, T-I-F-F -F file. Then I say save, and it's gonna ask me another question. Do I want to compress the image? This is like a trick question. What do you think? No. Aha, you were tricked. Why? <laughs> so I could say, no, I don't wanna compress, and that'd be fine, that'd be an archive file format, but it would take up more space than it needs to. Instead, I'm gonna always check LZW. LZW is the only lossless compression format, right? You don't wanna pick JPEG, you don't wanna pick zip because it's annoying. You wanna pick LZW. LZW will never lose content. It just takes a little bit longer to save, a little bit longer to open but it will really reduce the amount of memory the file takes. So I want LZW, I leave all the other information. There is image compression and then there is loss compression. JPEG is loss compression, PNG is loss compression. It's like rounding numbers. LZW is just process compression. So anyway, it's what the whole uh, HBO series Silicon Valley is based on, a type of lossless compression. That's revolutionary, right? LZW is already there. It's not as good as the one in the Silicon Valley show, but it's really good. So we say, okay. Now we have a new file type, so it won't overwrite your PSDs, your JPEGs, or your PNGs. And it is a TIFF. And it, you want to have your name in it, and you want to have in some form print ready in it. And then I'll usually mark those green. Well, let's change it this semester. Blue, because green is what I'm using for Photoshop. Okay, now, how do I print those? Well, we can't print off of your, your workstations. You don't wanna print um, photos and high resolution artwork off of a wireless connection with a printer. You want a wired connection. You want there to be no loss of data. You don't want that, that uh, printer to ever buffer or stutter because then the inks will dry at an uneven rate and you won't have the seamless gradations of your work. And we're talking high-end printers with lots of ink. 1,640 dots per inch at whatever resolution you give it. So instead, we have to put it up into our class cloud Dropbox account. So if I go to dropbox.com, you wanna make sure you're in Chrome. You should already be signed in. You go to files, you go to digital art class files, and you go to flatten TIFF files to print. 
Now, I'm doing this video for you to show you the basics of making things print ready, but I also give you instructions right in that folder. And it just goes through the main things you want to check. So basically, what do you do? You open your finished PSD version of your chosen assignment because you want your highest quality, uncompressed, unflattened version. Then you flatten the image. Once it looks like what you want it to look like, you flatten it. Then you check the image size. And you can change the physical dimensions of your image to fit comfortably within a matte opening. Most standard matte opening, like I demonstrated, is 8 by 10. If you want it a little bit larger, maybe for your landscape project, 11 by 14. Uh, you can change the resolution to between 300 and 350 PPI. 300 is professional, pixel per inch standard. 350 is our lab standard. Anything lower than 300 will not look as good as it could. And anything higher than 350 is just going to make your print take longer. Then you save the flattened and resized PSD file as a TIFF format file. And when it asks about compression, check to make sure that LZW compression is on. Then you upload your print-ready TIFF file to the appropriate folder in the class Dropbox account. So let's continue that. So all of you have an account here. You have a folder. As do I. I'm going to open up my folder. I'm going to drag my print-ready file into it. And then it's ready to go to the, the back row of printers, and I can show you how to print it. And I'm going to help each and every one of you do each and every one of your prints in this lab. because Not because I don't trust you to be able to do it right, but because the risks are too great of doing it wrong and filling up our printers with ink. Mm -hmm. That take a long time to clean up. All right. But that same print ready file, you could print at Office Max, you can print at Kinko's, you can print at Costco, you can print at Staples, right? You need to know what a print ready file is to get the best quality. But by controlling our own printers, we'll also get to really control the color. And I have them all set up to match. Now, what about an assignment that's not as easy as an EPS file you can just bring into an 8x10 format? So, this is kind of a new way to do it. Instead of changing your old assignment to fit, I'm just going to use this same window. I'm just going to go back in history a little bit to before I placed or before I flattened it, basically. Right? So that's my first print there. But I know this is 8 by 10. It's landscape format. The next assignment I want to print is my landscape. So it makes sense that it's landscape format, except my landscape this semester, I just forgot. It's vertical. So what do I need to do? I'm going to go here and say image rotate 90 degrees so that it is portrait format now. Still 8 by 10, still 350 pixels per inch. Then I'm going to go to my PSD assignment 1. This is after all the revisions. I've made it as good as I can make it. I'm proud of it. I'm ready to print it. So what do I do? I go to layer. Flatten image. Do I discard the hidden layers? Yes. Do I save this as a PSD? No. Right? Your PSD has all those layers. Instead, I say file, save as, what type of file format? TIFF. Very good. To archive it. And where do I want to save it? Just like I did with this one always to the desktop. So Command-D to the desktop. And when it asks me if I want compression, make sure you check that LZW is, is selected. OK, now here's the problem with it. Then I can close this, or I can just check it right now. If I printed it right now, let's look at its image size. It is 8.5 inches by 14 inches by 350. That is too big for my 8, 8 by 10 window, right? It's even a little bit too big for an 11 by 14 window. So what would I have to do to shrink it within my TIFF? I would uncheck resample. It's good to have this in the video. By unchecking resample, I can change the physical dimensions without changing any of the pixels. Right? So it will keep its same pixel dimensions. But I can say I need it to fit within 8 by 10. So I only want it to be 9 inches tall. And it will automatically make it then five and a half inches wide, right? And then the resolution shoots all the way up to 544. 
but that's fine. I could also say, okay, I